We want to build the most powerful computer on the planet, and that's a universal quantum computer. Quantum computer, which is able to run any quantum algorithm, and it does so um, by using quantum error correction and built on a platform of silicon technology. A quantum computer is the most powerful computer that we know how to build based on the laws of physics as we know them today. That's possible because they harness the most deep laws of nature, quantum mechanics, in ways that computers today just aren't able to do. Quantum computers can solve problems that are predicted to take longer than the age of the universe for our bigger supercomputers and solve them in a matter of days, hours, or even minutes. Conventional computers encode information in binary bits that can either be zeros or ones. In a quantum computer, the basic unit of memory is a quantum bit or a qubit. Qubits are made using physical systems such as the spin of an electron or the orientation of a photon. These systems can be in many different arrangements all at once, a property known as quantum superposition. Qubits can also be inextricably linked together using a phenomenon called quantum entanglement. The result is that a series of qubits can represent different things simultaneously. Companies have been working on building quantum computer chips for decades. I'm here in London to visit a quantum startup that's taking a different approach. We're taking one of the most uh, ubiquitous devices uh, in, in the world today, the silicon transistor. You and I will have billions of, of transistors on our person, in our watches, our computers, our phones, and take that silicon transistor and use that to store a quantum bit or a qubit. And in that way, we'll be able to make quantum processors um, that can scale up and really tackle some of the big problems in computing. Computers today are used for almost everything, but there are some problems that are beyond the capabilities of even our biggest supercomputers, like producing new chemicals, modeling exotic materials, and predicting the weather. All of these processes use the laws of quantum mechanics, which for today's computers is computationally infeasible to incorporate. By using quantum computers that are themselves um, working on the principles of quantum mechanics, um, we'll be able to, um, in, in the box, in the computer, uh, design uh, new kinds of materials, new chemicals, new drugs uh, in a way which is much, much faster than having to go through um, laboratory trial and effort. And so we think it could be transformative um, to uh, tackling uh, climate change through in the future, e even to areas like, uh, like personalized medicine. Building a, a functioning quantum computer is, is very challenging, but it's more than just having qubits. You then need to wire them up uh, to be able to, to run uh, quantum algorithms. Uh, and then you need interactions between the different qubits to form that, that basic unit uh, of computing that, that it allows you to run the, the process. And in order to keep a quantum computer functioning, you need to keep it cool. What we've got here is a, uh, one of our cryostats. It's known as a dilution refrigerator. And we use it to cool down our uh, quantum chips to a hundredth of a degree above absolute zero. This cryostat works in, in it has different stages. When it's cold, um, there's a, there's a plate here, um, which is uh, a temperature of one of the, uh, the planets, uh, further, more distant planets in our galaxy. Um, this plate here is about the temperature of deep space. Um, and then this plate here is 100 times colder than that, about 10 millikelvin, or a hundredth of a degree above absolute zero. Why does it need to be so cold down here? What, what's happening in this area that's not happening up there? Uh, we want to cool our chips down um, to very low temperatures um, to, uh, to suppress noise and errors and uh, allow uh, these single electrons to be well behaved as qubits in the silicon chips. At the moment, we're very much in, a, in an R&D phase, right? We're, we're developing the technology. So a lot of what you see here wouldn't be required for a, a, a standalone operating quantum computer. At the moment, we want a lot of flexibility. We want to be able to change the types of measurements that we're, we're probing our chip with. But pretty much everything that you can see in these racks um, could be uh, miniaturized to, to, to a, a very small um, controller. But the great thing is that now with cloud computing, the user from, the, uh, from a smartphone can access the power of quantum computers without even realizing that it's not in the, in the palm of the hand, but the actual computing is being done um, in some remote location. The race for quantum computing is on. With dozens of companies and billions of pounds of investment vying to bring a system to market, it may not be long before they become useful. Will quantum physics revolutionize the way we use computers forever? Ultimately, we're harnessing this incredibly mature, um, inc incredibly proven manufacturing technology that puts billions of transistors on a chip, and we're taking those building blocks 
um, to develop will hopefully be um, large-scale useful quantum computers.